Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here for a Green Leaf Season 5, Episode 7 review. This is the second to last episode. Next week will be our finale episode. And, um, yeah, it seems like we just started and it's over already. Like, Greenleaf, the series as we know it, is over. Bend down in Jesus' name. Huh? Bend down in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't care. What the world says about me, bend down in Jesus' name. Okay, and it does what it wants. <laughs> and it does what it wants, children. Let's get into this episode, okay? First of all, it opens with Grace bailing Darius out. Him and his car out of impound. Um, so Darius was not... Uh, kidnapped. He was not being held for ransom. He was not mollywopped and floating in a river somewhere. Um, he was just in jail. He got pulled over. Uh, we found out that that was Fernando last week. Everybody was like, um, was that Fernando? It looked like Fernando. I don't think it was Fernando. It was Fernando. Anyway, he was just giving um, Grace a lighthearted threat. Nothing too serious. I mean, you know, and uh, Darius gets in, get his truck, and he's headed out to where he was going when he got pulled over by the police, which is to the Eden Bell families to get this information about what it is that Bob and and uh, and Juanita Dumars was doing back in the day. At the same time, Grace thought about uh, Jacob's land and how it was sold out from under Jacob. And the idea that Jacob had no idea that they were H&H &H, may be just enough to get an injunction and stop the demolition of Calvary. So they go their separate ways. She head on off to talk with Aaron about this injunction. He heads on off to get these receipts about this Edenvale lending. Okay, so um, then we see May and Bishop. And Bishop is waking May up with a uh, what? Appears to be a lovely breakfast, but it is actually their, oh, her own wedding ring. He's dug it up out of the safe and he's giving it to her. And he wants to, you know, I, she, he knows she wanted to wait to flag day. But he's like, no, the time is nigh. The time is nigh. <laughs> I want us to get, you, you know, get married now. You know, if you'll have me. And she was like, oh, I want to marry you. I I'd love to marry you, she said, but not until we get on one accord about giving this house over to Tara and Rochelle. And he he is like, well, I may come on now. And she is like, no, I'm thinking about that plot of land that's off on the north side of the property. If we sell that off and give them the money, um, maybe that will appease them. And Bishop is upset about it. He he feels like may want to give it to Tara. Um, and Bishop considers it like a payoff. And, and basically, it would be him admitting um, to having done something wrong as it as it pertains to the death of Daryl James. And May said, close that ring box down and said, no wedding then until flag day. She ain't gonna, she is not that she ain't gonna marry him, but she ain't gonna marry him earlier because they gotta get this whole house situation straight. We see where Zora goes in and she is basically pressuring Jacob to let her go on to New York. Uh, she wants to know if they found her place in Hoboken yet with the cousin of y'all. Did y'all ask her about me staying in her house and all of that? She don't want to go and she don't want to do it. And he is like, well, your mom is supposed to do that. Your mom just left yesterday. Give me a chance to figure this all out. And, you know, 
we'll let you know. Like, you cancel your ticket. We'll buy you a new ticket. She just continues on. You know, she's just like a mama child. She's just like that old Carissa. All right. And then she hits him up with a new plan for an apartment and, and um, all of this. And he's just like, what did I just tell you? And, um, you know, she goes on. I was like, I'm not really sure why we had to have that scene. Okay, so then we see where AJ comes over to see Bishop. And he is just, it, this is the day. This is the day that the teardown is supposed to happen. The demolition is supposed to happen. So he first checks on Bishop as it pertains to that. And um, then, you know, he lets him know why he came out. Or he goes to let him know why he came out. And Bishop is like, don't tell me. Um, and then he just has this moment where um, he kind of seems out of sorts and it comes to him, oh yeah, 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 you hear about the car. And uh, ultimately they go down to to the shed where the car is and they are going to work on it. Um, then we go and we see where Aaron and Grace are walking up on Judy, Phil, and Fernando. And they've got a bunch of people working outside. They've got um, a lot of, you know, commotion going on. It looks like there's supposed to be this demolition going on, child, but, you know. And uh, Grace walks up with Aaron and she says, you know, this is a, a cease and desist, um, an injunction. We we filed for an injunction to stop this, this demolition because um, when my brother Jacob sold his land, he did not know that he was dealing with H and H. Now, Jacob Land is basically a boondoggle. This is what we learned when um, when he first got the land. When he first bid, begged Bishop for that land, we know that it's a boondoggle land. You can't really build on it. You can't really put nothing on it. So it is really boondoggle. You know what I mean? Like it's you. It's not. The land is not. Um, useful for commercial real estate right so um but you know apparently when it was sold jacob didn't know well fernando who was standing there looking nickel slick but well, baby when i tell you he was sharp as a tack and sunglasses and everything just standing there all smug and he says uh well carissa knew and and Grace is taken aback a little bit. He was like, yeah, I'm sure Carissa knew. She knew, and she enjoyed knowing. She enjoyed every moment of knowing. And Grace kind of leans into him a little bit, like, don't talk about my sister-in-law like that. I was like, what are we fighting over here? <laughs> what are we fighting over here? But okay. Like I said, that Fernando was sharp as a tag. I don't know why I remember him having an accent, though. But, um... Yeah, he was sharp as a tack and looked real, real good, baby, with them nickel slick bones. But all I could think about was chlamydia. Baby, you look good. <laughs> you look good, but let us not forget you out here passing around STDs like an old commoner. So, yeah, bring it down a notch, Fernando. Bring it down a notch, right? Um, And, you know... Fernando and, and Judy walk on off. You know, they she's just like, let's let's just let's just let's just you know they walk on off and Phil is still standing there. I don't know, he's paralyzed from the hair follicles down. Like Phil has had um, little to no dialogue in this season at all. And once again he's standing here, standing there with that tight, firm, exquisite chisel buttocks. <laughs> And zero to say, like nada, nothing. Grace and Phil, Grace and Darius um, and Aaron walk off like he not even standing there. Like everybody walks off and leaves him standing there, basically. And, um, you know, Grace calls Jacob and uh, he, she says, hey, Jacob, I know you said you didn't know about H&H &H being the one that, that you were selling your property to, but you think Carissa knew. And he was like, well, no, I don't think so, but I'll give her a call. So uh, then we see where Noah runs up on her before she walks off and uh, tells her that he found the caretaker. 
and Grace and Noah go to see the caretaker. Um, and it's an elderly uh, Caucasian man, and he clearly has some, you know, apprehensions about black people uh, or black people mixing with, with Caucasian people, you know. So they ask him about that relationship between Daryl James and Mrs. Davis. And he tells them they was fighting all the time, and it was it was violent, and it was it was you know a, a very um, sort of a, a hellish relationship. Like it would get so bad at times that he would go up and he would knock on the door just to check on her, but she would always act like everything was fine. And so Grace was like, "Well, were they lovers?" And he was like, "Lovers? Heavens no, they weren't lovers." And Noah was like, why do you say that? Is it because he was black and she was white? He was like, well, no. Um, he, Grace was like, well, you just don't know. What's the problem? And he was like, no, she wasn't. They weren't lovers. Um, Daryl James was her son. Which would explain all of the light-skinnedness. <laughs> With Rochelle and Basie, Tara, uh, Tara, you know, is is a little bit different anyway now um so we go back to the house and we see where may continues on with her plan okay she is on this whole little self-righteous kick where everybody is got to gather themselves and and um they all gonna meet at heaven's gate and they gonna all go in as one giant green leaf family if it kills her uh, she has gotten her truth out. No one has held her feet to the fire about it. She hasn't had to answer for it at all. She has not been looked down upon. Um, she hadn't had no slick stuff said to her over the breakfast table. Nothing. We have moved on from, from, from this 40 year secret that May has, May had. And now that she has told that secret, she is free to let everybody know what they do what they must do in order to be considered righteous, in order to be considered good, in, in order to be considered in right standing with the Father. And apparently he has given May all of the instructions. He's given her the manual, the rule books and everything and asked her if she would hold everybody accountable on his behalf. Okay, May. So she 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 going on about her way. She said this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. We're going to sell this little plot of land and we're going to give this money to Tara. Well, she's sitting there with Tara and she was like, well, Tara was like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, is Bishop okay with this? And she was like, well, Bishop's not in on this. The Bishop doesn't want to do this. She said, but um, I think Rochelle will accept it. This may now. I think Rochelle will accept it. Do you think Rochelle will accept it? And Tara said, no, I don't think Rochelle's going to accept this at all. And May was like, well, this is it. This is what this is what we're offering. This is how we're trying to be amicable. And, and Tara got a, little, got a little snippy with her and told her, it's no deal. No deal. Um, and she was like, well, I'm not in it with Rochelle, but I'm telling you, I'm like, child, bye. It don't make no difference anyway, but you turning it down. Like, I, I don't know. This is my thing. They don't have a legal right to this home at all. They don't have, the, from what we can see, the wherewithal of the money to, to go to court about this. It would be tied up for years and years and years. So um, anything that the Greenleafs are really giving them is, you know, is, is gravy, like, you know, <clears throat> so we see where Jacob calls Carissa about knowing about the H&H. &H, and he was like, well, yeah, you didn't know about that, did you? Did Fernando tell you about that? And she got quiet. Well, of course, she knew. She knew all about that she was selling it to H&H. &H. It was H&H's &H property. And um, she says, I'm sorry, Jacob. I'm afraid I, I did know. And he hangs up, you know. And he lets Grace know that. She didn't know about it. She didn't know about it, and, and apparently she's not willing to testify otherwise. So that whole injunction, I guess, and, and cease and desist pretty much, I guess, goes out the window. So going back to Bishop and AJ, they're, they're uh, in the shed where he keeps the, the car that they're going to put together. And AJ doesn't know where to start. Bishop doesn't know where to start, and they both sit down. 
and Bishop starts asking him about if he got saved in while he was in jail and or prison. And AJ was like, No, I <laughs> well, AJ, I mean everybody knows that you get saved saved when you go to go to prison. I mean, that's routine. You save, you become a Muslim, like, you know, you, this is how it's done. And so uh Bishop says, Oh well, if you want to be saved, I can I can walk you through it right now, get you set up with, with your paperwork and everything in heaven. We can do your um onboarding. And um, you can start minded, you know what I'm saying? Being a good old faithful Christian. And AJ seems interested, but at the same time, he is uh, apprehensive. And so he decides that he doesn't want to do it right now. And Bishop is cool, you know, but Bishop was like, um, tomorrow. Forget about tomorrow. You better choose the Lord today. Tomorrow, very well, might be too late. And it's something for AJ to think about, right? It's something for AJ to think about. It was a good moment. Bishop basically witnessed to AJ and he just let him know that, you know, tomorrow ain't promised. And when you get God down in your heart and, and really accept him, it, it just opens up and brightens up your life that much more. Right. It's a good moment. Then we see where Bishop and Charity sitting in the, in the den and on the news is being announced that Bob is running for Senate. And uh, they commiserating about what a scum bucket, bucket Bob is. May comes in and uh, Bishop is dragging Bob Whitmore's name. And May is giving him some self-righteous speech about that if Bob can be saved too. And Bob is not beyond, you know, saving and whatever, May. At the same time, Gigi runs in. She needs to talk to everybody. And they was like, what is it? And she said, um, Daryl James was Mrs. Davis's son. The caretaker told us. And they are confuddled and befuddled and bewildered and just trying to figure it out. And Bishop trying to figure out how all this fit and what. And May is, you know... Still on her like self righteous tirade, and Charity hops up off the bench and and uh, says she can't take this. This too much. She headed down to the church. Now this is the church that they supposed to be demolishing, right? She headed down to the church, and they were like, "Well, what you going down to the church for?" And she was like, "I can't just sit sit by and do nothing. I am going to go down there and and um give them what for." I was like, Lord, she on her way to do more harm than good. Y'all know Charity don't do nothing but mess stuff up. She don't. She very rarely ever makes things better. At the same time, Bishop tell me to get Tara, Tara, and Rochelle on the phone and tell them to come down that he want to talk to them. We see then we see where Zora goes in to talk to Sophia, and basically she wants Sophia. To leave Hampton, change all her plans and all her, you know, life trajectory to come move with her to New York so that um, Grace can pay Sophia's way and thereby in turn be paying Zora's way. And she don't have to worry about what her, where her parents and living and where her cousin and whole broken and all this other stuff. You know, so she's scheming. And Sophia was like, well, why would I do that? I thought, oh, you went to my mom and told her about these pictures. Um, and now you want me to just give up Hampton and move with you to New York. And she was like, um, well, it'll be good for you, too. I was just like, ooh, child, if this ain't, if this ain't Carissa daughter, fictitious or no, uh, this Carissa daughter, because she just is slick. And, and, and manipulative just like Carissa so then we see where Rochelle and Tara have come over Tara have come over 
and um, they learned the truth about Mrs. Davis. Uh, Bishop and May both tell them uh, that Mrs. Davis was their daddy's mama. Mrs. Davis was their grandmama. And basically, they're going to honor the original will. Now, they don't have to do any of that. They don't have to do any of that. So, I don't know why the Green Leafs are sort of treating it like Rochelle and, and, and Tara and their family got all the leverage. The Green Leafs have all the leverage. If it wasn't for this self-righteous act of May or this self-righteous new self-righteous lifestyle of maze we we wouldn't even be here like i i anyway um you know tara's happy she cool with it uh rochelle is not cool with it rochelle say she don't want the house she ain't never wanted the house what she want is bishop to admit what he did with her father in terms of how what what role he played in her father's death and this is this is all that she wants it's it's only in this moment that i moderately like rochelle only in this moment do i moderately like her <clears throat> because it wasn't about money for her we're learning this in this moment it really was about the truth of the matter i mean so, um, Bishop is scoffing. I mean, he is upset. He is fighting all the way, telling the truth. And I'm like, well, Bishop, maybe she knows something you don't know. Maybe she got some proof that, that, that you really did do this. But I guess she's telltale hearting him. If y'all remember the story of the telltale heart, maybe not. Maybe a lot of people don't know. But, um, yeah. So, you know, maybe she is just constantly being this voice of, of, of conviction for him and just pushing him to this place where he'll tell the truth. He's guilting him into it, basically, and pressuring him into it. So, um, at the same time, in, in role Jacob. Jacob is saying that Grace called him and said, Charity sent out an email to the entire congregation to tell them to come down to Calvary, which is being demolished. <laughs> Just I want to keep pointing that out. Have church members come down there so they can learn the truth about Bob Whitmore and Eden Vale Lindy. And Bishop say, well, uh, is anybody coming? Did anybody listen? Did an email reach anybody? And Jacob said, well, Grace said it's already over a hundred and so, so far down there. And so Bishop tell Tara and Rochelle and May and Jacob, let's go down now. And, 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 and he said, you want the truth, Rochelle? If the truth is what you want, let's go down here and I'm gonna, you're going to get everything you're looking for. I'm going to give you the whole naked, ugly truth. Bit more is standing there uh, right below the pool pit. And the church is fairly full of people. It's like a Sunday service, you know what I'm saying? Wednesday Bible study type situation. Charity on the front row with with Corinne on and she in the middle pew. And then um just to her right is Phil and then Judy and Fernando. And Bob is basically saying these people have called you down here under some bull skit. Uh or they he you know, he's shoveling the bull skit. And he said, this is old news. This is false news. It's fake news. It's old stuff. Like, why are we bringing this up? It, it, all I did was, you know, try to help poor people get a little extra money in their pocket so they can get ahead of their bills and they can get on top of it. Hey, I'm the good guy here, everybody. And so uh, Charity stands up and says, well, why was it all only black people? That you was doing this too. And he was like, listen, I don't even, you know, they bring up Juanita Dumas, which is Phil's um, mama. 
And at the same time, Grace is meeting Darius in the in the in the vestibule, and he got the receipts from the Edenvale family. And he done called uh Yusef Shabazz, and Yusef Shabazz confirmed something, confirmed the receipts, I guess. You know, and I guess he gonna speak uh on on uh Juanita's behalf if it comes to a court situation. <clears throat> and uh Grace and uh, Darius are walking into the sanctuary at the same time that Charity done stood up and asked this question about why black people? Why were they all black people? Why were they all poor black people? And Grace is like, well, answer, answer uh, her. What about um, Juanita Dumas? And y'all, uh, her name is a signature on all these loans. You, you making her the face and therefore the scapegoat in all of this. Why are you doing that? And he looks over at Phil, and Phil drops his head and stands up. And finally, finally, we get a Phil Dumas speech. I don't think we've ever heard Phil Dumas preach. I don't think we've ever heard Phil Dumas teach. We haven't heard Phil Dumas do anything but scheme, scheme, scheme. Now, all of a sudden, it is a miracle. He his tongue works, and so does his arms and his legs, and he gets up. With that razor sharp buttocks, okay, chisel sculpted, rock hard rump, and he stands up and he tells a story about his mother and her being on her dying deathbed, and 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 all she could think about is is the guilt she felt and feeling bad and feeling shame, and he was like, well, mama, why you why you feel so bad, mama, why? Why do you think the Lord will not accept you into his, his his heavenly arms? Why do you think that the pearly gates will be shut to you? He realized now what it was. She died not telling him, but he realized now after he's hearing all of this and his daddy done spoke to him about it, he realizes that his mom was was uh, on her deathbed. She was feeling this extreme amount of guilt about how she led her own people like a Pied Piper, you know, into into Bob Whitmore's, you know, waiting jaws, right? So, um, basically, Phil Dumas just turned on Bob Whitmore. And Bob Whitmore takes it like a champ, baby. And then he tells Judy, Judy, give me your give me my ring back. And Judy was like, ah. Phil. And he was like, give me the ring, Judy. I want my mama's ring back. Now, you done gave this woman your mama's ring? Really? 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 I mean, is your salary so low that you would give a woman you, 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 you don't even remotely love? Like, you don't even want to eat her ambrosia salad, but you give her your mama's ring? Ooh, when I tell you this Phil Dumas character... Has turned out to be one lily livered soul. Fine. Fine. But he lily livered. He jelly back. You know what I mean? He's a coward. And uh, she takes the ring off and throws it on the floor. I was like, okay, don't get windmilled in this in this sanctuary. Do not get windmilled in this sanctuary. You're playing too much, Judy. She going to sit down next to Fernand, though. So he goes to pick the ring up and looks over at, at uh, Charity and she looking dead at him and she looking like she she want to run over and hug him and dust that ring off and kiss it for him and tuck it in his pocket and then kiss his pocket and then, you know, she just. <sighs> so um, at this moment, Bishop walks in. He's got full entourage. He has got AJ with him. They got everybody but Carissa and Noah and, and Winky Blinky and Nod. So they got Sophia. They got Zora. Uh, everybody in May. Everybody is coming in as a family. And they got Rochelle and Tara with them, right? So um, Bishop leads in. He's walking up to Bob, and you know, you, we all know how Bishop feel about Bob and the, and the whole H um, and H situation, hoping mayonnaise. And we we all know how he feels about that, and so he starts in on his diatribe, and, and uh, he heads up to the pulpit, and basically he confesses his sins, and he tries he reconciles himself 
uh, basically to Christ and back to Christ and to the church. He talks about how um, when Mac, the, their family lawyer, the church lawyer, I forgot that Mac was actually a lawyer. I thought he was just a man that got things done. But yeah, I guess that could be a lawyer. Makes sense, right? So he says when he came to him with the proposition uh, about the house and the lady was looking for somewhere, Miss Davis was looking for something to do with his house and get his house up and uh, a place to leave her legacy. Um, he asked Bishop to go over and talk to her, which he did. And and uh, Miss Davis gave him the house and then he used the house as leverage to get the land for the church and to build the church. And, and he, you know, apologized to the church. He felt like he led them astray. He felt like he could have looked a bit, a little bit closer, a little bit harder. He could have asked more questions. He could have been just a little bit more leery about just jumping into everything, not even realizing how it fell into his lap. Uh, he treated it like a blessing, but really it was, you know, it, it was a scheme, right? Like he was a part of a scheme and part of him knew it. He's admitting it now, um, or is he admitting to the fact that he did not ask more questions or, um, you know, be more clear about how he was acquiring all this land and property and so on and so forth. It was all a part of his agenda. It was all sin. He was wrong. And he thought he was teaching them about how to get a blessing. And he wasn't teaching them that at all. And then Corinne stands up and says, oh, no, you taught us a lot. You told us plenty. And, and um, you know, everybody's in the audience listening to what he's saying. Uh, her name is Cora. Connie. Connie's there. And she, you know, she went from looking self-righteous to looking accusatory to looking like a whipped dog. I, I mean, okay. You know, I, I'm assuming that Bishop's apology Although it's stung, if people seem to appreciate it. Like I said, Charity, I mean, uh, Corinne stood up and says, you taught us a lot, Bishop. You taught us more than just that. And May stands up and she um, seconds that emotion. And everybody stands up and they, you know, kind of just chattering about, oh, no, Bishop, you don't have to feel bad. You don't have to feel sorry. Like, we forgive you type thing. And Charity goes and sings. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Everybody starts singing. And then uh, Bishop told Rochelle when he finished his speech, Rochelle, I know this isn't what you wanted, but I hope you got it. I hope you got what you needed from this. And she looking all sad and her eyes all turned down and Tara just standing there like, how does this, how do I fit in all of this? Do I still get my property or like, what is we doing? Like, how does this affect me? And the whole family makes their way up to the steps, uh, uh, going up to the pool pit. Bishop comes down a little bit. He's standing at the top at the pinnacle and May comes to meet him on the step just below where he's standing and the family fills in and it's a beautiful portrait. The children are there. The grandchildren are there. Even AJ is there. And he's standing there like a scraggly little photo bomber <laughs> off to the side. And, um, uh, I forget. I think it was Darius that told Bob Whitmore and Judy that they need to leave. And they gathered their things and gathered Fernando and Judy and her sack of bones and ambrosia salad and moved and, and, and left. I was like, <laughs> don't y'all own the church? Y'all don't own the church. Y'all don't own the church. Don't H and H own it now? I don't. They leave out, okay, and Bishop is standing there, and he's got the, the whole family hugged up and loved up, and everybody's supporting him, and they're continuing to sing Amazing Grace. And Rochelle is leaving. I don't know where Tari is. I guess she was standing to the, staying to the end of worship service, and, and uh, Rochelle is walking out across the vestibule, and uh, Grace runs out and says, um... I don't know if she said thank you or 
she said, are you happy now? Did you get what you needed? Uh, and you get the house, that type of thing. And uh, Rochelle said, I never wanted the house. I just wanted, I wanted the truth. And, and you know, I, I wanted exactly what I got today, which I guess was for Bishop to sort of render his garments and lay prostrate before the Lord and admit, um, vaguely admit, to knowing that something untoward was going on, something, not admit to her father, you know, killing her father or having her father killed or lighting the match, but admitting to the fact that he should have dug a little bit deeper instead of just accepting all of these gifts that were being given. That was all Rochelle needed, and uh, Grace also said uh, she knows that Rochelle was the one that turned AJ up. I forget that she if she said I know you gave AJ's name and number to Bob or to Noah or something. And uh you know Rochelle con conceded yeah that she did that and she just told her she said I just wanted everybody to know that wanted to show everybody that you wasn't little Miss Perfect. You know everybody else is not uh, has not fallen from grace and you the only one standing at the right hand of the father right like you ain't got your parking space and heaven already grace and she said well anyway I just want to thank you and uh, Rochelle walks up and says well you're welcome I mean I guess that's a lot saying he coming from a center like me or something child and then she sashays on out and when she opens that door it's like a bright light in front of her it's almost like Rochelle disappears into the dusk, into the mist, into the fog, right? So we done wrapped it up. We done wrapped up H&H. &H. We done wrapped up this whole um, land plot scheme situation. We wrapped that up. We wrapped up losing the house. And we, we, on, this, we only on day seven. It ain't but eight days in this season. We on day seven, and all of these loose ends have been tied up. At the same time, Charity is walking through the office, the business side of, of Calvary, the office part, and swinging her purse and feel really satisfactory about herself. I mean, for the first time in a long time, she was mildly, moderately helpful. And so Phil catches up. Hey, Charity, let me talk to you for a minute. Phil, why you got so much pep in yourself, sir? Why is you lightly jogging up the charity? What are you doing? Like, you don't seriously think that whatever it was you did mildly, that little popcorn sermon you gave about your mom in the deathbed, um, and then having to wobble and dig around in the dark for your ring off the floor after Judy basically threw it in your face. He told me, she said, Phil, how can I help you? And then Phil was like, uh, can I see you tomorrow? Oh, so you think you just finna get a date. First of all, Phil, you leave with an apology. You don't ask for a date, right? Like, that's one-on-one, makeup one-on-one. And uh, she was like, well, why would I see you tomorrow, sir? And he was like, well, I listened to you. I was wrong. All those things I, I said to you, I was wrong for saying them, and I apologize, and I, you know, I, I really, really want to be with you. I, I love you, Charity. And she was like, "Uh, okay." She said, "Listen, even, even Kevin, my son's father, never broke my heart like the way you did." She said, "I just don't think I can trust you with it again. I just don't think I can trust you with it again." And he took a deep breath. She stepped around him and walked off, baby. She looked like she wanted to cry. At the same time, she was proud of herself. She was proud of herself because she finally, finally, finally came out of a situation where, uh, where, as it pertains to this whole Phil Judy triangle, where she didn't look like a complete and utter idiot. Finally. So we've also rectified charity, I guess. We've also. Um, sort of absolved her through this mildly superhero moment that she had where she basically sent an email. Anyway, so um, yeah, we wrapped up Rochelle and we wrapped up the whole feel and charity situation. We see where um, Grace is sitting in the car with Darius and Darius is saying that Bob Whitmore is going to step down and he's going to give up the church and everything. Basically, he is being run out of town um, because he's been exposed and 
um, her and Darius kiss passionately. He want to go back to the house. He really should want to go back to the house for a shower and to brush his teeth with some baking soda and toothpaste. But instead, he want to take Grace back to the house so he can connect the parts. So he can get some of that sticky icky, right? And uh, Grace was like, well, I got to go back to the house because Sophia want to tell me something. So maybe tomorrow. I was just like, gross, Grace, gross. Um, you know, and there, there's some speculation that Grace gonna get back with Noah, but you know, the way she was coming, uh, Rick falls down. I don't know, I don't know, but what you know, anyway. So, uh, Grace get back to the house, and uh, Sophia's trying to talk to her. Uh, Sophia starts out by apologizing. Uh, she Sophia asked Grace, Grace, what are you gonna do now? You know, this is the term of events, what are you gonna do now? And Grace was like, Is that why you called me in here to talk? So it sounded like Grace might have been slightly upset with her. Like maybe she knew about the pictures and she was, you know, being disappointed in Sophia. And Sophia was like, I will listen, mom, I'm sorry about the pictures. I apologize and I promise I won't ever do anything like that again. And uh Grace said, What pictures? What are you talking about? And this in this moment that she realizes that her cousin Zora is a liar. Is a liar and and uh, is a schemer and a manipulator, just like her good for nothing mama. Um, then we see what May has got on her uh, lingerie. Um, I mean, tell she got a beautiful, beautiful negligee on. She got them, 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 them breasts pushed up and they glistening. They supple. Okay, they ready. <laughs> She put her little hand cream on, baby. She got her old black lace robe on, and she ready, baby. This is all that she wanted. Now the bishop has confessed, and he has reconciled himself to the Lord. She can really, really give him that good old Christian loving, baby. She can give him some of that self-righteous puss. He has earned it because he laid himself on the cross, baby. And uh, this, all of this just turns her on. So she crawls across that bed and Bishop is just sitting there with his eyes closed. Now he done fell asleep reading his Bible. He got his old sateen pajamas on, child. And she gets over there and climbs across that bed and she said, um, Bishop, I'm ready. <laughs> you know, I'm ready for you, Bishop. And Bishop uh, just... And she's like, Bishop, Bishop, and he, you know, one eye open. Uh, 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 that mouth dropped a little bit. And she was like, Bishop, Bishop, what's wrong? What's wrong, Bishop, honey, what's wrong? And she was like, let me call the, call 911. And he holding her hand. And she was like, honey, what? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And he is on the Bible. He motioning his finger. She was, you want to write something? You need a pen, Bishop? I was like, girl, this is a stroke. Every second counts, my dear. Every second. Leans over while she getting the pen out the door. She calling the police and she giving them the address. Please come to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 Avenue, please. You know, that was a long, long number of address. Gets the pen out and sits back down. And by this time, Bishop is... Oh, 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 but he can muster up enough strength because when she climbed across that bed, she said, Bishop, you ready to marry me and get some of, get some of this self-righteous Blackberry Cobbler? And so he decides he's going to write his answer down. I do. And this is the first time we see an actual, genuine cry. When I tell you that Lynn Whitfield baby took these few moments, these few moments, and gave us everything we need, them acting chops, that that, that girl knows she can act. Lynn Whitfield can act, baby. And she said, you do. You do, baby. You do. Just hold on. Hold on. Please, Bishop. Just hold on. And, and you do. You, you do what? 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 And, and you do. You will marry me. And and uh, she said, I do too, baby. And that tear ran down her face, child. I said, Lynn Whitfield, you don't come through with the acting, sis. Okay. And 
Bishop and laid on back and she said, No, no, stay with me, baby. Stay with me, baby. We're gonna get somebody here. Stay with me, baby. Stay with me, please, please, Bishop, Bishop. No, grace. Bishop, stay with me. And Bishop said, ooh, ooh, ooh. He goes on now. Episode goes off. We don't know what's going on. Okay. We have no idea. Now we've been down this road with Bishop before. Y'all remember? Bishop had Parkinson. He had not too long to live. And, and uh, he just just a simple switch of medication and he was able to live. Um we we thought Darius was Molly wopped up and head split open and dead somewhere he fine. We thought for sure AJ had had um saved the season by getting rid of his character altogether. Turns out he was fine. And uh, now it looks like Bishop is is gone. It it looks like next week, the last episode, everybody is dressed in black, like they going to a funeral or a wake. And uh, we see every all of the characters, you know, crying, melancholy, sort of consoling one another. And the idea is that Bishop is dead. I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait because, like I said, we've seen characters that we thought were dead in this series before and they've always come back with the exception of Basie and Daryl James. <laughs> so uh yeah it looks like you know uh Bishop is in trouble and the uh, patriarch of of the Greenleaf family um has died. I don't know. But we'll see next week. Next week is the season finale you guys what did you guys think of this episode? Um it was one of the more exciting episodes for this season. And we tied up all the loose ends. We tied up all the the um, auxiliary characters. Um, Rochelle has walked into the sunset, faded out into the sunset, and so has Bob Whitmore and uh, Phil and Judy and, and H&H and H&H and H Lending. I don't know if... Um, uh, if Jacob gonna get his land back, I mean, I I don't know. There's all these other things, but for the most part, everything is tied up in a neat bow. What did you guys think of this episode? What do you what do you guys think of of um just how it progressed and uh, Bishop's speech? Um, y'all let me know. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. I holla. <laughs>